He took my hand His only son And he led me into The mountains Up Table Rock Down Linville Where he painted the beauty of the mountains He said, son, this is the goodliest land My father used to take me here Drink from the spring where I drank as a boy It's a water of life, so sweet I grew up in Morganton, which uh, someone described as Mayberry on Valium. <laughs> um, just super laid back, at least when I was growing up it was. Uh, my father, you know, just had a real calm, gentle way about him. And he said when he was five years old, he was in front of the fireplace with his brother Charlie and there was a raging fire, a controlled fire in the fireplace. but. Uh, an ember pierced my uncle's pajamas. And uh, the story goes, true story, I was told that my father very slowly and deliberately walked into the next room where my grandmother was sitting reading a book and said, um, Mother, Charlie is on fire. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a sense of urgency about Charlie because he was rolling on the floor. He knew what to do. When I was at Carolina, I, I took a speech class under a Dr. Paul Brandis, and I, I really loved it. He talked about North Carolina dialects. And when I uh, got out uh, of college and got into radio, I thought it would make a nice feature. So I went over and interviewed him again. And, and he, he talked about the different dialects in North Carolina. And he said, well, you know, North Carolina was developed mostly by yeoman people, so our dialects are, are not, real, not real sophisticated, but that's okay. Um, and, and he said that, you know, usually the dialect that you, that you gain early in life is the one, one you will keep uh, until you're, you know, until you're gone. Because unless you're highly motivated, you'll probably end up talking that way. But there are some people in this world who have the ability to kind of blend in with the varying dialect. And I asked him, who, I said, who's good at that? And he said, well, you know, Gover Governor Jim Hunt is great at it. And he said, he doesn't do it in, in a, an obtrusive way, but he just kind of, I, I can remember a sound bite, like going on the Outer Banks, he would say hatteras, just like the people down there would say it. I mean, you know. And so it's, it's the skill of a good politician to be able to, to kind of blend in with the locals. Now, as I said, you have four main dialects in North Carolina. You do have that high tide on the sound side. My wife worked in the post office all her life, that beautiful Elizabethan dialect. I got so tarred arning by the hot fire, couldn't stand it, you know. And this is the dialect that really makes all the English teachers cringe because they use the double negative. Well, I ain't never coming here again. They didn't serve me enough iced tea. I went to the uh, Nightdale Chamber of Commerce, and I was trying to demonstrate this, and I said, they said, can you give us another example? I said, well, it's a nice night for a knife fight in Nightdale. And they didn't like that, so I said, well, it's a nice night for a kite flight in Nightdale. All right? And they said, okay. And it's funny when the, the country store person goes to the back door to call the dog in, they say, get in here. Rufus, you get in here right now. I got a dog named Rufus. Get in here right now. But uh, you also have the other dialect, with, which is a, a little, little more sophisticated, more of a, a country club dialect. I have a sister in Greensboro, Stephanie Scott, and she talks like this. Just, I mean, she just loves collars and bears and dollars and mirror, mirror on the wall. Who speaks the fairest of them all? Why, I do, of course. 
But it's funny, you know, when, when my sister goes to the back door to call the dog in, she doesn't say, get in here, Fido. She's very practical. She does what works. She says, get in here. Get in here right now. Thank you very much.